Hi, everybody. This is Carson. Oh, and, and I'm Brandon. <laughs> I'm Al Columbia. <laughs> uh, that that seems like a dangerous statement, Sean. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, I, Al Columbia, no relation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the safe way to do it. All right. Uh, Brandon, what have you got for us today? Explain, explain yourself what we're looking at. Oh, yeah. So we're... This is, is Matt Howarth's, um, I believe it ran in Particle Dreams that Fanographics published in the mid to late 80s. And this is a, a, a time travel comic where a person keeps going back and meeting themselves. It was printed with instructions of folding it into a Mobius strip. So you could just read this thing about this guy meeting himself over and over. Again. Yeah, and it comes with his instructions. These are um, the instructions. And then this is the actual strip here. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very simple. Um, yeah, Matt Howarth is a, a, one of my favorite cartoonists ever, but he's always an example, kind of like a Frank Miller for me of somebody who, like their their illustration isn't that wouldn't necessarily sell the book as, as impressive as they are, but their story his storytelling and what he does with it is kind of above and beyond kind of anyone else. And and this is just genius, Sean. We we were talking in a previous one about comics relationship to time. This is where I think comics do something that nothing else can do with time because it it visibly all exists at once and i mean yeah you kind of have to well even the fact that you have to manipulate it with your hands um adds something to it so this is where i think you know we do it's not just comics exceptionalism we do have like something totally different that we can offer people yeah and i got to get a hold of this because this is fantastic and the physicality of it that the physical nature of it contributes and, to the meaning is something I love in comics. And inviting you to cut it out yourself, uh, also very appealing uh, to me. Uh, so I want to ask you guys, uh, do you think this is different or similar to um, the, the, the entire book is one image with the characters moving across the entire book thing that was recently in the news for like a, what was that? Uh, it's one of the DC books with a, Batman or Robin derivative knight something or other. I and it had, about that one. So is I'm the, not is the, sure what you're talking about. The yeah. the trick is that night Nightwing is that what it, I don't. Oh yeah, uh, there's a Nightwing. It, it it's the the trick is that every page is attached to the previous page, and so the entire book someone has traveled across you know an entire cityscape or whatever. Um, oh. From page to page, uh, to and you know they got a lot of uh, props, um, and I just like to say. Um, Mad props to Aaron Franklin, who is a Seattle cartoonist who, uh, as far as I know, is the person who came up with that particular conceit. Uh, she had a comic back in 2010 that I saw at a uh, Georgetown art exhibit that was hosted by like the Fanographics bookstore, I think. Um, I, don't, I don't actually, it might have been part of a Bumbershoot festival, but uh, Erwin Franklin is a really inventive uh, comic artist, and she uh, is the founder of the short run uh press uh, exhibition uh and uh she she had made this cartoon uh, this this one comic that was really cool and it was actually displayed as one continuous paper almost like a japanese scroll uh and uh anyway this nightwing thing you know 10 years too late but uh that's I, have, cool. I have a uh a pat McEwen comic that reminded me of here oh uh, Patrick McEwen did this in the back of Dave Cooper's Weasel, and it's basically what you're talking about. This is the, um, it's, it, this one's really fascinating. I don't know how the woman that you're describing it did in hers, but this one, what he does is, his panels basically are rooms in this, which is a trick that's been done a lot, but, but the interesting version of, of it in this is that you follow different characters and then other characters will come into other things, so it doesn't read left to right, and you follow it left to right, up, down, like a character will take an elevator and it'll switch the tiers of the panel and, and you'll follow them over here. And then there's another character who like burst through a wall in a car and you just follow them the opposite direction. Oh, um, where did you get that? I need to get one of those. Oh, so this is, it was published in the back of Dave Cooper's book, Weasel, the fan graphics put out. Okay. Um, I got to try yeah. to find one of those. Yeah, um, doing, he did a book called Hair Shirt that came out a couple of years ago or a decade ago, probably. That's really fantastic. The, the Sean, the thing you're talking about, they did that a couple times in Promethea, and I want to look at another thing out of Promethea. 
but they had two issues where one of them was like a mobile. If you tore, if you taped it all together, mm -hmm. um, the whole thing would make a, a circular mobile. Oh, so cool. it would wrap back in on itself. And then there was another one that was just like one continuous like pan across the scene. Like uh, Dave, Dave and Gerhard did that in an issue of Cerebus too. It was just broken up into panels. Um, in going home, right? Gerhard just follows the boat continuously over yeah, like 50 oh, sure. panels. The boat comes into the harbor and uh, something like 14 pages, 14 page sequence. That uh, you can stitch is... all together. Yeah. Right. That was a fun one to restore, by the way, when you have 13 of the 14 original artworks. Uh, <laughs> you got to oh, match them all together. That, that <laughs> sucks. Uh, so this is uh, Kate Thompson was the uh, writer uh eloise this is a fantastic book by the way hillary knight was the illustrator super inventive illustrator and here's a sequence where uh eloise gets into the elevator oh, oh cool and then we have her path through and you know you can follow her all the way through and you can follow her that way or you can follow her in the text nice and the it's all mate I wonder how much he had to talk the printers and the publisher into an extra fold up page. I know. Yeah, this is before it was popular, you know. You know, this is um, so they were taking a chance. This is 1955. Um, wow. And it was a huge success. But uh, yeah, this is the earliest version of that particular uh, thing that I've. Nice. And you said 55? 55, yeah. Oh, um, okay. I misheard the date. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I've seen that before. Yeah, but I think cool. Dave Dave Cooper is also a Seattle uh, cartoonist, right? So I wonder if what do you know what the time the date is of publication of that particular one? Uh, I think this was um, God, what year was that? I guess it must have been early two thousands, maybe like two thousand three. Okay, well we're moving back in time. Oh wait, there's a there's an actual. Let's see if there's a date from around here where Comic Ewan signed it. Oh, this is nineteen ninety nine, I believe. Wow. And he signed it, Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> and also, screw uh, you, Chris Ware. <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, four tiers um, with one for, per character is a, a trick that I've first seen in um, Tezuka's uh, fourth volume of Phoenix. Uh, fourth volume? Fourth volume. Uh, there's a sequence where these people are trapped in a spaceship together, and then they all, their ship is damaged, and all of them have to leave in separate pods. And it splits off four different channels for the entirety of them being separated from each other. And it's uh, oh, quite really amazing. Cool. This yeah, is I look other... forward to getting to that because we're going to get to that volume eventually. And I'm like eagerly, uh, eagerly awaiting. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's what we saying, Brandon? That one again um, I was going to say there's another Matt Howarth comic, an issue of Post Brothers he did where the two characters, um, I think it might be in another frame in here, but if I can explain it very simply, the two characters uh, split off from each other in the top row of, of each page is one of the brothers and then the bottom row is the other brother until they they go back together and i have a manga here that i've never seen translated that is basically four newspaper strip style things that all kind of culminate in some giant earthquake that happens in all of them and there's a big two-page spread where <laughs> where they're all feeling the earthquake all these mm. different genres so yeah, there's so much cool stuff that's, that can be done with that and has been done with it you got to scan some of that and send it over so we can look at it in a later episode. Cause I have that, I have sure. the one you're talking about, I think where there, there are two people running. We can look at that in the different episode too. Sure. Um, that would be awesome. And then I wanted to look at, cause we're talking about the Moebius strip. Um, I, I'm always going to go back to Promethea a lot. Cause this is the, oh, sure. one, one of those books that just constantly hammered home stuff that only comics can do in my mind. But that, that same thing, uh, of the the narrative where they get stuck in a loop and and they they start talking about the fact that like oh, i feel like i've had this conversation again and um they're they're they feel trapped in the loop which i thought was really clever but looking at the the physical one that you showed is even more interesting because it dimensionalizes it yeah that one's really fascinating because the panel borders almost seem like they would create different yeah. styles of reading it like, because you could take that out and then it would just feel like a, like a Where's Waldo kind of more nonsense thing. But because it has those those lines in it, it almost is like a little sanity guides to, to be like, I can go from the top to the to the next panel. And then it's, you know, you at least know where, I guess, kind of, you kind of know where to go next from it. I don't know. I feel could... like you could take those out, maybe. 
I don't know. That that does seem almost like a like they were worried that people wouldn't get it. Kind of. I weirdly thing. like it in this because one of my one of my least favorite things in comics is when you have uh, those. Basically, this trick is usually something I dislike, but they, I think it looks cool here. Where you know anything where it's like kind of one image broken up with multiple panels to show time, because oftentimes you don't you don't need to break break up anything to see it. Like this. Like stable scene with a panel mapped all panels mapped all over top of it. Yeah, like this, I think was only be useful because there's that uh, Frank Quietly Grant Morrison uh, thing where it does a similar thing to this, but but time is different. Yeah, that's this. that's the one. Yeah, like this I yeah. think is is fantastic. But you don't really get a the shape of the room as much as you would if it was just one big image. But it's kind of necessary because because of the way that time is messed with. Right, because it gives you the chance to show the different lighting effects and everything like that. You can visually indicate the time shift. Yeah, but what do we gain yeah. here to have this? The, those those big black borders. It's very interesting. Yeah, I don't think I think it would be better without them on this one. Well, the the only thing because I've used this once and I did it because I was kind of playing with the Frank quiet quietly looking Frank quietly. Uh, I always want to say quietly, Frank quietly looking, and he does this kind of stuff. What I found interesting about this is like if the burrito is showing up like here, you know, if, if you're taking um, different pieces from these different parts and moving them around and cutting them off more, I think it could be more compelling. This one, I, I do think it's enough that you could just have these characters walking through it. I think in this one too, uh, the reason I saved it and that I liked it and, and that I do think it, the trick works is it's not just time, but it's talking about the segregation of the, um, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. The groups, right. The Royd Ragers, the drama Queens. And so segregating was, was a smart idea there, I think, but this is the trick that you're talking about, right. Stable image with the panel borders. Yeah. What it. book was this from? Um, this was Generation Zero. It was a Valiant book. Uh, okay. You know the more modern Valiant. Um, let's. It makes me wonder how it would read if Francis you Pistola. changed every, the the coloring style of every right. of every group. Yeah. Yeah. And that's Gave that's the time. Frank quietly thing you're talking about. Is these are three different, and and he just did an interview with the Kayfabe guys where he was complaining. <laughs> that he wanted the colorist to make a larger difference between this sequence and this sequence. He felt like it was unclear that like these were similar. happening at different times. Um, when you read it, you can kind of piece it together, but he wanted it to be as clear as this, that there was a third time interspersed sure. over this. And the way that the character's dialogue interacts is fairly linear which is interesting but you're you're overlapping the three different times so this is the kind of stuff that i think comics does do that no one else can touch like pretty obviously yeah because were... of the totality of the existing all at once with the exception of children's books which is the other place this is where's wallace which is the actual origins of where's waldo it's mm. by the same artist Hillary Knight who did the uh, the other example we were looking at and uh, this book right here uh, breaks out to um, a double page spread every once in a while and you can follow any number of it's like 12 characters who are looking for this one main character and all 12 characters are in all 12 of this all of the double page spreads and you have all these interesting sort of narrative tricks happening inside of the you know, I mean, if you're familiar with the Where's Waldo book, which basically is like what made money with this concept. So now nobody knows this because <laughs> there's this juggernaut. Um, it's like that with the story. Uh, huh, and it seems like it's kind of like Where's Waldo on hard mode if you have 12 characters on every. Right, exactly. Well, do those characters, if they're on every page. So, I mean, that technically is a comic because there's a story being told through the relationship of the pages. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say lots of children's books are comics. Uh, yeah. they just go they get filed in a different section of the bookstore yeah but you were saying oh you, this, this is a trick yeah it can be done in children's books too i think it's it's working because the same kind of language as comics is there and and then stacking it through the book like 
well, something we should take a look at at some point is here by Richard McGuire. Um, right. That his, his stacking of time happens. That's another thing that that's a book that shows the physicality of the book purposefully stacks time over that stable image, but through a three dimensional space and the spine can open it like, like a room, like that's kind of shit you can't do in a movie. Oh, <laughs> for sure. There's a comic that was in Raw Magazine years ago that I'm spacing on the name of the author, but it, was, it wasn't it was so much a story. It just showed like a conversation in a house and then it would have inset panels that were like, this is, you know, a hundred years before this house was built just to, you know, when this place was a forest. Yeah, then, that's like, that's it. That he, that's he, it. He, he took that and made it into a full book. Okay. A that's... full color book. You haven't seen that? It's here no, by I, Richard McGuire. I haven't yeah. read the full version either. I just read it in Raw too. And, no, uh, he made it a really... full, like, three hundred page book, full color, exact same, exact same formal conceit, exact same thing. But the corner of the room becomes the fold in the book. Oh, that's cool! Uh, wow. It's fantastic. Yeah, I'll check it out. Um, yeah, that we'll we'll have to loop back to that one to... as its whole own episode. So today, Sean and Brandon both learned that Richard McGuire made a full book out of that awesome eight page story. That's exciting, actually. Yeah, because yeah, raw. In a lot of ways, raw was such a, such a weird. I wonder if the kayfabe guys have done a raw episode yet. It seems like they're a wheelhouse. There's so many things. My older brother had all the collections of raw. Um, are you guys familiar with the issue of it where they had a corner of every book torn off that they would tape inside the book? No. <laughs> Very avant-garde. So like the actual like, physical thing. Yeah, purposely like they just had rip, it, because I think it was. You know, it was kind of a, a kind of anti, uh, you know, bagging and boarding thing where they're going to be like, already <laughs> before you buy this comic, it has ripped corner that you, is also inside. And I think there's stories of just Art Spiegelman just like with all the getting his friends together for a party just to rip up books. As someone who's currently packaging a bunch of books, if I had to go through and fucking rip a corner off and tape back every one, I'd jump off a cliff. So yeah, props good to them. I don't know how many they printed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it must have been enough that I could, that my teenage brother bought it in Seattle, you know. Damn. That's on a, that's whatever a lot allowance of work. he had. I would love to make books like that. And, and that goes back to what I like so much. The, the Promethea thing is cool, but the example that you sent, I, I want more comics and books where they really justify themselves as a physical object and like being able to twist it like that. Um, is there anything in the story that would then like conceptually link up with the like twisting through space or something, or was it purely just the time loop? I think it's the time loop, but if you bring up that folder that you had opened with that, with that in it, there's another thing in there that is always the example that I bring up for a comic that, that utilizes being a print thing better than anything else I'd ever seen before. Uh, <laughs> let me find my, I have so many, here's my, Here's my folders so people can see. Um, oh, physicality yeah, creates meaning. That's it. So the bottom left uh, thing of that is uh, the same page on, on both sides of it. And it's a it's a page. I, I ripped this off from multiple words in a different way. But... Oh, well, let's let's make it separate. We're going to we're going to stop. Wow. OK, we'll stop. I'm gonna we'll stop we'll you guys week. and we're going <laughs> to next yeah, week. We'll reconvene the next thing. week. Yeah. And we'll we'll see what's up with this. All right, we'll we'll see you guys next week. It it'll totally be next week. You'll notice because all the boxes behind Carson will be gone. We'll all have different T-shirts on. There'll be a different guitar on the wall. Maybe I'll uh, have grown a beard. <laughs> right. Uh, I'll cut my hair. And this cup will have just a little bit less water in it. <laughs> That's how much water you drink in a week. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening, right. everybody. See you next week.